Hey yarn friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. So today is Vlogmas Day 4 and I want to show you how my blanket has turned out so far. I added the green in on the purple and it's beautiful and it almost reached around right here. But it has turned out just so beautiful. I love how the um, peach and the purple looked so pretty together and then the purple and the green just looks beautiful together also which I think any of the colors would work up just beautifully like this so I'm loving that and so in case you're just tuning in and you don't know what's going on with this little scrappy rectangle blanket um, Terry at Your Enjoy Podcast and I are doing a swap for the month of December I sent her 25 little baggies of yarn and she sent me 25 little baggies of yarn scrap balls and um, we're each making a rectangle granny continuous blanket so um, be sure to jump over to Terry's channel which is yarn joy podcast and check out the blanket she is making also and um, I know some others are the viewers are following along and also making scrap blankets along with Terry and I and um, I can't wait to see them posting pictures on Facebook so we can see how their blankets are turning out. Uh, my eyes look really dark. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm still here in the hospital, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. I want to go ahead and open um, day four's yarn. So I have my little baggie here. Excited to see what color comes next in my blanket. And then after this month, um, when I have finished opening the 25 bags from Terry, I plan to keep adding in some of my scrap yarn until the blanket gets to the, um, you know, a size that I, you know, like. Oh, this is pretty. This is um, multicolored. You can see it's got lots of little colors in there. It has purple, yellow, pink, and this beautiful turquoisey aqua color. And I don't know, it might be other colors on the inside. Um, but that's pretty. That'll go great on this. So I'm just going to tie in. And I did have the nurse, like yesterday, or when I did the day threes video, this thing was on my pinky. And I couldn't hold my yarn because I hold my um yarn in my pinky like that and I was just I was trying to crochet with it not not holding it down with it just draped over and it was like really slow go it was hard 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 to do and so um so I'm gonna lower you a little bit and so I got the nurse last night I was getting aggravated because I couldn't crochet and you know I don't have anything else to do so I want to be able to crochet so I asked her to um, change it from my pinky to this because I knew I'd be able to um, hold my crochet hook with that. So I am going to add in this color right here. I'm just going to tie that on and clip off the little ends later. But I'm ready to um, ready to get started with this. Get this color added in and see how it's going to look. I really enjoyed this. I appreciate Terry doing the yarn swap with me. Um, I didn't anticipate ending up in the hospital. But to tell you a little bit more of it, um, about what's going on with me, I have had ongoing um, esophagus issues for a little while now. And I've, uh, like two years ago, I had my esophagus stretched. It's been a little over two years now, but anyway, roughly two years ago. And then, um, I've had, um, it, it was good for a whole year after I had my esophagus stretched. And then, um, it, it, about a year afterwards, it started getting bad again. And, um, I put off going, put off going in, I don't know what deal is with this. I have too much yarn there. 
Okay. Now, I put off going in and then COVID started and I put off going to the hospital, you know, because of that. And um, then it just got to the point where it was really bad. And so I ended up going in. Um, and I did have a scope, but my oxygen dropped during that scope. And um, they, they didn't really do anything. And then they didn't want to do another scope because they said I was high risk. And so I have, a, I've been seeing ongoing about my esophagus just um, about a week ago. I had an appointment with the surgeon and um, he set me up with an appointment in Shreveport, which is about two and a half hours away from us. So I was going over there. I have an appointment over there with a surgeon on the, eight, not surgeon, with a GI doctor on the 18th or 16th, yeah, to have an, um, a test done on my esophagus to see how much it contracts when I'm trying to swallow. And so I have that test coming up on the 16th. Well, in the meantime, I'm waiting on that test. My esophagus just decided, um, that it was uh, not going to work, that nothing was going to go through. And I was trying to eat, and I was just, it would go down, and it hurts, like, all down in my chest area. It's very, very painful. And what I was trying to eat or drink would go to that point, and then I would throw it up. And it's very painful, um, not fun at all. And that particular time that I was trying to eat, I was throwing up like, I don't know, how many times you think, Jody? <laughs> Jody, mm -hmm. how many, when I was trying to eat last? Oh, at least 15. I was throwing up like about 15 times, you know, it was crazy. And then, um, then I couldn't even drink tea. And that's killing me. And so, um. And um, later that night, Jody got me some ice cream to, um, because I couldn't eat to see if I could eat some ice cream. The ice cream would not even pass through, and I couldn't get water to pass through. So um, the, the next day, I got up, and water, I couldn't drink water. I would drink it, and it was very painful. And it would go down, and it was just hurting so bad in my chest. And then I would just throw the water up. So that's, you know, that's like, well, I can't go on like this. How many days can I live with not being able to drink or eat anything at all, you know? So that's when we came on to the hospital. And um, I, I think it's taken them a long time to figure out that I was not nauseated. They kept, you know, asking me, is my nausea better and stuff like that, you know. And I never was nauseated. This was down in the ER. Um, you know, I was trying to explain to them that I'm not nauseated. It will not pass through. It's not that I, you know, drink or eat and then get nauseated. But anyway, um, the surgeon team came to see me in the ER and... Um, Actually, the surgeon here um, says that I'm high risk and he didn't want to do anything else with me. And um, I know he wants to send me to Shreveport and let them deal with me. <laughs> so anyway, I've been in here. I've been in the hospital. It's been the weekend. They haven't done anything for me except IV. I've been getting, um, you know... I have my um, IV, so I'm getting the fluids from that, and I got potassium from that because my potassium was low. And so other than that, I've just been hanging out here, um, sleeping. Now I'm nauseous. My stomach's nauseated and hurts because uh, it's hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> and so um, I have gotten some Zofrin for that to help with um, just being nauseated from being so hungry. 
And then uh, when my chest is hurting really bad, um, they'll give me some Dilaudid. So I've had that a few times and slept between the Zofrin and the Dilaudid. Look how this color is working up on there. It's, a little, it's, it's more turquoise and it has a few specks of yellow, purple, and pink through it. So it's real pretty. I like how that's working up. So anyway, um, that's all that's going on really. Um, tomorrow will be Monday and they have some uh, a barium test. And I had the same barium test uh, about a month ago maybe. Um, and they, the barium test then said that I had a restriction in my esophagus. But then when they did the scope, the lady who did the scope said she didn't see restriction. So we'll see what the barium test shows tomorrow. Now I haven't tried to eat, um, drink anything today. Um, I don't know if I did yesterday either. I haven't tried to drink anything today because, um, I don't have anything in here to drink, for one. <laughs> and two, um, I'm not anxious to try anything because it's so painful. So I don't know. I, I'm really hoping that that will open up and I'll be able to drink. But um, on the other hand, I'm scared to even try it, too, because it is very, very painful. And so... Um, when they did my scope last, they weren't able to take biopsies because um, my oxygen dropped and they had to pull out really quick. So um, they ended the scope before they could take biopsies. So I'm hoping that if they um, go back in to do a scope or whatever, whether it be here or in Shreveport, which I'm kind of thinking they'll probably end up sending me to Shreveport, and if I need a procedure done or anything, hoping they will take biopsies and give me a peace of mind of that. Um, so, anyway, it also could be part of Raynaud's. It also could be scler scleroderma causing this. It could be lots of different things. Uh, and somebody in a comment had mentioned that um, about a cynophilic esophagus and that could be a possibility too. Elijah has dealt with that. Um, so anyway that's why I want him to take the biopsies so we'll know you know what's going on and can get me straightened out because um, like right now my my throat and my mouth is just so very dry. It's horrible like cotton dry. But anyway, um, I hope you're all having a great December and uh, working on your projects, whether it be a um, scrappy blanket or Christmas gifts or whatever. I'd love to see pictures on Facebook, so um, I hadn't been on Facebook much. Actually, I've just been sleeping a lot up here. But anyway... I'll let you all get going. I appreciate you watching so much. And tomorrow for day five, come back and see um, the next color that I add in. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.